Okay, fair warning, this video is just me messing around in the shop with some speakers and microphones and I actually ended up with some results that I didn't quite understand myself. So, I'd like the internet to help me out. Leave me a comment on what you think is going on. If you just want to skip over the first part of the video, it's mostly just setup and calibration. Um, maybe somebody has a comment on some problem with my methodology that would be useful. Otherwise, just skip to the end, look at the results, and tell me what you think is going on. I've got a Nexo M sub 18 and I've I've taken the driver out and it's just kind of sitting on some wood blocks there. I've got my computer with Signal Scope Pro on the oscilloscope feature and I've got Logic Pro with an audio file that's literally just a DC click. And then I've got um, Yamaha Rio here as my input output device and an NX amp and the the amplifier setting is um, currently set to flat, so it's it's just passing the audio through with no processing. First thing I'm going to do is actually run the two outputs of the, the Rio from Logic into two different inputs. So they're the same. One's the reference and one's the, the source. And then I'm going to just go ahead and play this um, tick sound, the loop speed is the same as the refresh rate on the oscilloscope. Hope that makes sense to everybody. Now you can see that there's the white trace and then there's the gray trace. The white trace is the um, the reference input 1 and then the um, gray trace is uh, input 8 which is the source. Now one thing I'm gonna do here is actually take an enable triggering in the oscilloscope so that the um, positive uh, waveform on the reference, the white trace, will snap to the middle blue line all the time whenever it occurs, right? So I'm going to go ahead and turn the triggering on, but I'm also telling the gray trace to follow the triggering for the white trace proportionally. I'm going to turn on some, um, some delay here on just the right side. Okay, so you can see we've got some delay now we've added to the gray trace. We're going to turn on the triggering and it's going to make the white trace snap to the middle but it will also make the gray trace proportionally move with it. Okay, so now we're going out the Rio, grab this cable here, to the amp, through the amp on the flat setting, to here, up to the speaker to line level converter into the Rio. And you can see that the gray trace, oh look, it's slightly behind because the amplifier adds a tiny bit of latency. I've actually already determined what it is. It's about a millisecond and a half, which I've already calculated for. So what I just did there was delay the reference trace, the white trace, by a millisecond and a half. The reason why the gray trace is the one that moved was because it's listening to the trigger of the white trace. So the white trace is what actually got delayed, but the white trace stayed in the same place because it's the one that's triggering to stick in the middle. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that um, I'm registering the correct phase on the driver and uh, also with the test microphone. So first I've, I've got the driver now, instead of um, this being plugged into uh, the amplifier, the speaker to line level converter is actually now just plugged into the driver, okay? And I have that now going into um, going into the, the reference signal, which will be the white trace on the computer. So check it out. If I go ahead and touch the batteries to the speaker, a couple of 9-volt batteries, um, we can see that the speaker moves out. There we go. So speaker moves out, we get positive reading on the oscilloscope. So next I'm going to plug in my test microphone into an input. I'm going to touch the batteries to the speaker again and have it move outward and we'll see what the microphone does on the oscilloscope. Okay, so this is what was picked up on the oscilloscope from the microphone input. Again, you can see positive values. That means positive air pressure reads positive on the microphone. Next I'm going to just put the microphone down underneath the driver and then I'm going to redo the test with the batteries again here. So again the driver is going to move up in this case. Okay. So you can see that just by moving the mic underneath the driver 
we get a negative first little tick there. Oh, by the way, the reason it didn't quite line up with the blue is because I have the triggering set to sense a positive value. Alright, so we're back to having just the reference plugged in, and then I've got my mic plugged in. Now, this time I've got the output um, going to the amp, and then actually now it's plugged into the speaker. So we're ready to make noise out of the speaker. So here we go. I'm going to start the tick in the software with its triggering and everything. Okay, now we can see the white is the reference and the gray is what the mic is picking up from the driver coming out of the amp. We have to account for the latency of the amp, so I already did that. But look, there's like still a little bit, like a little bit left. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to just add another half a millisecond because, you know, the physical driver and the microphone and everything adds a little bit more. So there you go. So now we're perfectly lined up again. And you can actually see here if I grab this microphone, when I lift the mic up, the signal gets low, but it will auto resize it. Up and away. All right, bring it back down. All I'm going to do now is go into Logic and turn on a 20 hertz sine wave at a low level um, that's going to be intermixed with the tick. It'll just kind of play on top of it. Here we go. So the white again is the reference and the gray is what the mic is picking up. Now I am going to stop the oscilloscope and do it again and it'll land at a different spot just because I'm not very exact with my start time. Let's try it again. See how every time it's a little bit different, but the relationship of the gray and the white stays the same. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead for now and since we know it's in time, I'm going to stop the clicky sound. We're going to um, go back to the oscilloscope here. We're going to trigger it so that the start of the white waveform, which is the reference on a positive value, um, becomes uh, right in line with the blue line. There we go. All right. Gray is what the mic is picking up. And the first thing I notice is that it's like, it doesn't look like it's in phase. In fact, it looks like it's out of phase or close to it. That's kind of strange. This is again, 20 Hertz. Watch what happens when I take the microphone and just move it to the other side. Look at this. Bringing the microphone around back top underside, back to the top. Now, what we can do is let's raise the frequency to just, you know, something else. So here's 20 hertz, let's go up to like 30 hertz. Okay, so there's 30. You saw the graph change that, again, it keeps the positive stroke of the white in line with the blue and the zero mark, okay. There's 40 hertz. The driver is getting louder, so the gray trace is, is getting bigger. The, the, the white one obviously doesn't change. Mic on the top side of the driver, mic on the bottom side of the driver. Over here, just kind of like right on the side. I almost can make it cancel out completely, find that null spot. I'm going to raise the frequency until we find something that seems to be in phase. So here we go, here's 40 hertz. There's a hundred. Two hundred. Okay, looks like we finally reached a frequency where the microphone is in phase. Again, it's it's just it's on the top side. It's in phase. I'm going to pick the microphone up and just move it to the underside of the, the driver. Out of phase. Top side. So what I'm going to do now is take and um, let's look at 20 hertz again. So this is 300. Let's look at 20 hertz. Okay, not really in phase. 300 hertz, in phase. I'm going to add the two together, just stacking sine waves. So you can see that the 20 hertz, even right now, the 20 hertz is not in phase, but, but the 300 hertz 
is in phase. You can like see that right here, for example. So back down at 20 hertz here, I've resized the window a bit so that we can see lower frequencies with uh, more clarity. So let's go down to about 10 hertz. And then let's go down to 4 hertz. So I've paused the graph at 4 hertz here because below this the microphone reading gets really unstable. But we can see that there's about a negative 90 degree phase shift in the reading from the reference. So we're back at just 20 hertz now and I'm anticipating that some people are wondering if, you know, a different microphone would give a different reading. So I'm just going to unplug this and we're going to just plug in another condenser mic I had laying around the shop here. So you can see it's it's got the same phase relationship at 20 hertz to the reference. I've added a line coming from the speaker terminals to this little circuit I made that has a couple LED lights and it's real simple. The green one flashes when the signal goes positive and the red one flashes when it goes negative. And, and this is coming straight from the amp. Um, it's happening so fast, it's, it's basically the speed of light, so there's no delay. So this is happening right in time with the audio signal. So we can get a visual reference if we put this over next to the the edge of the speaker. Um, this is at 2 hertz right now and you know even right now we can see that it looks like the motion of the speaker is moving right in time with the electricity flowing through it but uh, we'll turn the frequency up and audition it at higher frequencies using a slow motion camera and we'll, we'll slow it down and actually see what's going on. So at 10 hertz here we can see that the driver motion is pretty much in time with the electricity flowing through it just like it was at 2 hertz. Now just so you know, I've time stretched all of the following clips so that they visually look about the same speed regardless of frequency, just for clarity's sake. At 20 hertz, same story, more or less in time, maybe just a tiny, tiny bit behind, but it's, it's hard to tell. At 40 hertz, though, we can definitely see that there's the beginnings of a little bit of lag. The driver's starting to move a little bit late in time. And then at 80 hertz, we can definitely see the lag kicking in. There's a definite amount of delay to the driver movement. At 160 hertz, it's completely flipped. The driver is moving the opposite direction of the electricity that's flowing through it at that moment in time. So at 240 hertz, we can see that the driver's still out of polarity. Um, we're starting to get some flex around the surround, and at 320 hertz, we can see the surround is really starting to move irregularly. Uh, we're still out of polarity if you look at the cone and the red light, that seems to be the clearest, but also we're reaching the slow motion camera's limit in terms of being able to produce a smooth image and the data past this point is going to be unreliable. So going back to the microphone reading here, at 20 hertz we can see again that it's not really in phase, even though the physical movement of the driver we know is in phase with the electricity. As we increase the frequency, the reading from the microphone is also getting further and further behind in time because it's moving to the right relatively to the white trace and by the time we get up to like 160 hertz the reading is almost in phase with the reference even though we saw that the physical movement of the driver is completely out of phase. So I've resized the oscilloscope horizontally so that we can see higher frequencies with a bit more clarity. So let's keep going up in frequency. So at 2000 hertz, we can see that it's out of phase. If we plot a projected phase response on the graph based on what we saw in the slow motion footage, it would look something like this, with a slight dip starting around 40 or 50 hertz, and then by 160 hertz or so, we're down around 180 degrees of negative phase shift, or sliding backwards in time, effectively, at those frequencies. Now let's look at the actual phase response from the microphone reading. It's very, very different. And of course, if we stack our projected on top of it, we can see that there's a massive discrepancy in what the physical motion would suggest the phase response would be and what our microphone is actually reporting.